So I built my brake pedal extension to get my pedal out wider so that I don't have to angle my foot to get on it. But uh, one thing that I've noticed is that it's too flat. I have to point my toe too much to get the downward pressure to hit the rear brake. So what I need to do is raise the pedal up just a little bit. And other bikes, it's kind of simple. You have basically like a just a shaft and then you can rotate it and clamp it on uh, at a different angle. But this one, it does not um, clamp on to the pivot point here. It's basically bolted on here and it's got a fixed angle where the pedal is pinned to the uh, master cylinder on the brake. So I already took the, uh, the ring out of the pin. What I'm gonna do to adjust the angle of the brake pedal is detach it from the master cylinder and then unscrew this bracket here just a little bit to extend the arm on the master cylinder and basically shift the pedal up just a little bit. So from right here to maybe about right there. But I can't turn this uh, clevis on the master cylinder without taking the pedal off first. So I've got to do that. Okay, so you need a half inch wrench, open ended wrench to get on this nut uh, that's behind this torx head bolt. fast. So I'm going to hold this nut in place with a 9 16ths wrench while I use the crescent to loosen this bracket here. So I thought. There we go. Now you see it's got about uh, four threads on it. Now, and I'm just gonna back it. Back it off a couple, right there. Maybe right there. And then I'll test fit this pedal before I do anything else. I think that's about the angle that I want right there. Let's see. Before I tighten everything up, that in place. And I'll sit on it and see how my foot feels. Yeah, see before my foot was, I was having to point my toe way more to get on the brake. Now that's right where I want it and I can keep my toe off of it on the peg right there while I'm riding. But when I go to put the brake, it's gonna respond a lot better. I'm not having to 
point my toe like a ballerina to put brake pressure. All right. The box end of this wrench is too fat to hold onto the nut, get it down in there, get the thread started, and then remove the box end of the wrench. So you're not going to be able to see it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this magnetic uh, retrieval tool for when you lose things down inside of an engine compartment to basically just hold the nut and lower it down and of course it wants to stick on everything around it um, and get it into position until I can hold it with my finger from the bottom side and then start the threads but of course the washer wants to come off All right, I think I got it there. Get it started. Just finger tight. Make sure we're not cross-threading anything. And, okay, it's on. So now, I can take my open-ended half-inch, get it on the back side, hold that nut stationary, and tighten it up. When I got the bike, this pin was actually placed so that the retaining ring was on the inside, and that was a little bit of a pain to get to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it this way with the retaining pin on the outside. That way it's easy to get to. There we go. Rotate it around so the hole is where I can see it. And kind of bent this out of shape a little bit, pulling it off. That's pretty good. At least it'll work until I uh, get a brand new one to put on there. The safety Nazis will tell you not to ever reuse anything like that, but until I get down the road and get a new one, it should hold up just fine. There we go. All right, let's give it a test. This is where the real test is, uh, sitting on an incline, remaining stationary, so that I can smoothly take off with one hand on the throttle, one hand on the clutch, not having to use my front brake, just using the rear brake. And I can already tell this is much, much better. And it feels much better using both brakes to come to a quick stop.